All right, I think um, we will get started here. I'm going to share my screen. If everyone can mute themselves, if you're not already muted, and um, stay muted, but throughout the whole time, you can type questions into the chat box, and we'll do a whole uh, question and answer at the end of this session. All right, so um, here we are at the webinar. So I'll get started by, we're, we're gonna get started by doing a really brief introduction. So my name is Claire Kaufman. I'm the Southern Arizona Sustainability Program Manager for Local First Arizona Foundation. Um, and Mike, you wanna take it from here? Yeah, I'm Mike Beal. I'm the Statewide Sustainability Director for Local First Arizona Foundation. And thrilled to see this turnout. Thank you all for your interest in what we are getting launched. Uh, literally in the last week, we just launched our uh, Southern Arizona Green Business Alliance and we're welcoming uh, as much participation with that alliance as we can get going in our region. And we have a lot to tell you about with our programs. So I wanted to start off with a very brief introduction about what the alliance is all about, which is basically we're here to support businesses and nonprofits uh, across Southern Arizona to be empowered with sustainability strategies and really uh, to be able to be thriving, be resilient in this uh, crisis. We've been spending a lot of time retooling our programs to be more relevant in this COVID-19 era that we're all living through. So it was important to us to, of course, still focus on sustainability as a way to uh, combat climate change and the, the climate crisis, but also the reality of where we are to be strengthening businesses and nonprofit models to be as, uh, as strong as they can be in the digital age and uh, in the safest way they can be in, in, uh, in our new era of social distancing. And then also uh, to be the most community minded they can be. We want to uh, incentivize and empower businesses to Go as, and nonprofits to go as far as they can with uh, giving back to the community and thinking about new models that can be empowering in employees to be part of the decision-making process, to be more of a democratic uh, workplace. And again, resiliency being about, uh, to us, about the regenerative economy and uh, about us all together being more collaborative in Tucson and, and across the state as well. We hope that this model can be a model for uh, the rest of Arizona and hopefully beyond. So the next slide, and you can go to www.sazgva.com to get more information. We're also uh, thankful, I wanted to highlight briefly the support we've been provided by the city of Tucson. Mayor Romero has been so supportive of our efforts and the city of Tucson Environmental and General Services, the uh, Tucson Water Department, Pima Association of Governments, the Tucson Electric Power team, and then also uh, the state of Arizona, all supporting us in addition to many, many other partners that we have on today, including Mrs. Green's World, Tucson Clean and Beautiful, and so many others. So uh, I wanted to uh, start there. And then uh, next slide, highlight that we have three programs that are here for supporting you and to ensure that we are really creating a pathway. The idea is that uh, with our partner Tucson 2030 district to support uh, non-local businesses with local first Arizona, our focus is local businesses and nonprofits, but we want to ensure that more uh, participation can occur across the region with sustainability and climate action. So we have programs for everybody uh, to meet their uh, needs to be customized and tailored to your needs. So we have uh, the green leader program, uh, then we have scale up and we have Tucson 2030 district, which we'll talk about throughout this webinar. And the idea is to uh, guide you through as much as, uh, as possible through all of the programs. Next slide. And the idea is that Green Leader Program is the starting point. It's the foundational program for both uh, local and non-local businesses and nonprofits to go through. From that program, we're encouraging the local businesses to get additional support through Local First Arizona Foundation through Scale Up 
and then for the non-local businesses to be going through the uh, Green Champion program through the Tucson 2030 district. And throughout, we're here to support with additional resources, with research, with consultations. We're here to, to guide you through this to strengthen your, uh, your business plans, your, not, uh, your organizational plans, and to, again, be about resiliency and sustainability, both short-term and long-term. And the slideshow can be available later. We're also recording this too. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Claire Kaufman to uh, go over uh, the Southern Arizona Green Business Leaders Program in more detail. And please, if you have questions throughout, we're uh, taking them as we go and at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, cool, so yeah, I'm gonna dive into the Green Business Leaders Program. Um, as Mike said, this is uh, kind of as we're framing it, an entry level program to uh, get businesses um, familiar with the different green actions they can take and ensure that businesses that are putting in the extra work and effort and care to uh, do green actions and community minded actions are being recognized on multiple levels. Again, this is available to local and non-local businesses. And when we say non-local, it's not that they're not in Arizona. It's that it's the non-local first definition of local, um, meaning that they're franchises that might be owned outside of Arizona or they might be headquartered outside of Arizona or have um, the majority of their business operations outside of Arizona. Um, it's just, just the distinction we have to make as Local First Arizona being a primarily or a organization focused on promoting local businesses. But through our partnership with the Tucson 2030 District, all businesses located in Southern Arizona will be going through the same program. Um, Go to the next slide. So this is a preview of the checklist. This is on the website. I know the font's a little small here, um, but you can see the outline of the checklist. It covers a bunch of different categories. There's um, starting actions, which include uh, developing a baseline of your current energy, water, transportation, and waste usage. And this is um, probably one of the most helpful pieces of information a business can have in figuring out what they need to address, maybe like where their energy costs are high or um, just like different and, and being able to track how their improvements have reduced their energy costs or water costs, waste and so on. Um, there's our resiliency section, which we've added in response to uh, COVID-19 and that's about crisis adaptation and resiliency in all of the following categories. For example, like in energy, how to have a plan uh, for uh, energy use in, in periods of uh, when there might be limited energy available or electricity available or in, in times of drought, things like that. So then we have sections on energy, water and green infrastructure, waste and procurement, transportation, food and events, equity and environmental justice, community engagement and next steps, and then additional actions, which are up to you to come up with additional actions. Um, and so I want to point out that the whole checklist in total is 65 points, um, but to be certified, you only need to attain 30 points. Um, to be certified at the silver level, you need 40 points, and to be cer certified at the gold level, you need 50 points. And we've done it like this because most of some of these actions are harder to complete than others um, and some are possible for certain businesses and not others um, and we wanted to make it possible for businesses that are doing a lot but might not be like at superstar green level yet to still be recognized and to still be able to uh, access the benefits of certification and to keep working towards certification. So now I'm going to go through how the program works uh, step by step. Again, keep putting your questions in the chat box and we'll have time at the end to answer questions. So the first step is to ensure your business is located in Pima County, Santa Cruz County, 
Yuma County or Cochise County. Um, we're, we're anticipating that the majority of businesses will be in the Tucson area, but we are open to the entire Southern Arizona region. Um, I'd recommend to review that checklist preview I just showed in a little more depth so you have an idea what's in the certification program. When you're ready to register, and you can always email Mike or I, Mike and or I, for more information before you register, but you can fill out the application, which is um, this link here on the website. And that application, uh, once, once we get that application, we'll send up an initial phone consultation to answer questions and make sure the program is a good fit just so we know what you're wanting to get out of it and so we can talk about uh, the program structure and, and yeah, make sure it's right for all of us. Um, and then after the consultation, we'll send you to the portal through which you will submit your payment. So the fee structure is varies based on the size of the organization, the nonprofit or the for-profit. Um, and we've done it this way in part because a, a, a big part of the program is the, uh, consulta the, the consistent support and co consultation that businesses will receive throughout the program and then the significant marketing, um, the significant marketing uh, for doing the, for being a green leader. However, because um, we're all aware of the times we're in. Uh, we're developing a scholarship option for local businesses uh, that uh, would like support to go through this program. And the, the add-on for that would be that you'd participate in a virtual learning group with additional planning support. So we're mapping that out right now. And by early next week, that should be on the website. So when you apply, you can also apply for the scholarship. Um, so then once you've paid or you've gotten the scholarship, um, we'll provide access to the checklist, to all of the resources, um, to the instructions for how to complete everything and all the other materials. Um, the checklist will have um, different uh, categories. It'll be a yes, no, or review uh, category. And in fact, I I should pull that up, though I don't. Um, I'll pull that up in a minute. But um, it'll make it easy to, instead of getting bogged down in all the things that might be difficult to do or you haven't done yet, just noticing what you've already done and what might not be applicable for your business. Because who knows, you might go through the checklist and you might already be at 30 points. Um, and then you could decide you know, which additional actions you want to pursue. Um, to raise your certification or to get to 30 or to get to 40, something like that. And we are going to be available throughout the entire process to provide support and answer any questions um, along the way. Cool. And then once you submit the checklist with supporting documentation, we'll review the We'll review the checklist, we'll make sure everything looks good, um, and we'll schedule a follow-up phone consultation just to see uh, if there's anything else that we can do for you. Um, and so once you become a Green Leader Certified Business, you'll receive all the benefits of certification, which I'll talk about in a second, and um, additional benefits will be conferred for silver or gold certified businesses. The certifications are valid for two years, but you have the option to recertify after one year. For example, if you want to uh, go from bronze to silver or silver to gold, you could do that every year instead of waiting two years to recertify. Um, so we have the why get certified. Um, again, this is all on the website, but uh, Broad categories of why get certified are first to improve your business. So, um, a lot of this is about costs. A lot of this translates to cost savings practices like reducing energy use and water use and even waste uh, or transportation costs. Um, you can make money from increased promotions. 
from our that we will be providing to customers um, and for procurement contracts. So, you know, if, if we're uh, working with a big company that wants uh, a specific service or product, and uh, we can specifically recommend our green certified businesses. Uh, and employees and customers are often looking for businesses that, that are, are making an effort not only uh, for sustainability, but also making an effort to be more community minded. And that's really where the equity and environmental justice and community engagement and next steps come in. Um, and it will also help to create a more meaningful and supportive place to work for your employees, strengthen your team and business plan, and get recognized for your leadership. Um, it'll also help you gain skills and knowledge, so you'll learn best practices to reduce the impacts of climate change and improve public health. We spent a lot of time developing a pretty comprehensive guide to different local resources um, in different categories of sustainability. Uh, and then we'll be there for individual consulting, personalized recommendations. Right now, all of that's virtual, but if in the future we'll be able to go to the business, we'll be able to do walkthroughs and point out things. We can do that now virtually, um, but, but we're always available for support in any way that's needed. Um, and then support your community and be part of the regenerative economy. That's a word that, um, sometimes it's thrown out there a bit, but to us, it's essentially the human economy. It's an economy that doesn't just focus on profits, but focuses on profits as well as doing good for the community, doing good for people, doing good for the planet. So then more specifically, what you'll get if you're a certified business is you'll get a uh, green business certificate, a window sticker, um, digital marketing logos that say you're a green certified business that you can use on all of your um, materials. You'll be invited to an annual awards ceremony. Uh, that's also TBD depending on uh, COVID-19. If anything, it will be a virtual ceremony, but hopefully by the time that, um, hopefully by a year from now, we'll be able to be in person. Um, and then an inclusion in the green business directory. So that's not yet live on our site because we haven't we haven't had any businesses become green businesses yet. But once we have the first one, we'll have this directory up on our site that business that people can search to search for green businesses in the community, in their area, by industry, um, by bronze, silver, and gold, all of that good stuff. Um, and then a mention in the monthly Green Leaders blog and social media posts. So everyone who goes to the program is gonna get a shout out on social media. If you get silver or gold, you'll get a longer blurb in the blog, an additional so social media feature, and then you'll get the recognition that you're a silver or gold certified business on all of the materials, not just the certificate. Oops. And then uh, for gold only, you'll get your logo on um, the Southern Arizona Green Business Alliance website, and you'll get special recognition at our award ceremony. So that was, um, that. that's kind of it for green leaders right now. Again, uh, the applications are open. You can always apply and we can have the initial consultation with you. We can talk it through. And if it doesn't make sense, then there's no commitment there. Um, so, we want to make it as accessible as possible and we want to provide as much personal support as possible because this stuff can be confusing um, and, and yeah, confusing. Mike, do you want to add anything about this before I jump into scale up? I just wanted to add that we're here to uh, be part of this, uh, this planning journey and more than just that journey of for uh, the getting the plan together, but really to be a collaborative process. If we can help with troubleshooting, if we can help with additional resources, I think the resources we put together are, uh, I, I think, a, a major benefit of being part of this program. We put a lot of time into scoping what we think uh, are the resources, the essential resources to get started with being part of the regenerative economy and thinking about people and planet 
and profit, but more so the community first and uh, the planet first, and really thinking about how we can be part of all of this uh, solution making together. So I'm excited that you'll be part of this and see what these resources are all about and how to apply them to your uh, organizations and your businesses. Thanks. And then on the scholarship component, I did want to add that we uh, we want to provide for the businesses that and nonprofits that need that uh, major extra support given the crisis. Uh, we want to set up uh, regular uh, online learning forums, basically discussion forums, so that we can uh, be troubleshooting in uh, real time on a more regular basis. Uh, so it, it'll be more of a deeper dive for those who are uh, needing that retooling right now for where they are and uh, immediate support in other areas for uh, their business plans. It could be working with our partners, for example, getting additional support for your uh, immediate business planning needs. Cool. Thanks. And I did want to share, this isn't up on the website. Um, Mike, can you confirm that you can see the checklist? I can, okay, yes. Cool. Um, so this is what the checklist will look like. Um, again, it's not up on the website, but uh, you'll see all of the different um, action items, all of the different resources linked on the checklist. Um, you'll be able to go through and click if it's a yes, if it's not applicable, if this is something you want to review later. So it makes it easy to see in one space. Um, and then we're using Google Classrooms as our platform to be able to communicate with uh, businesses and uh, yeah, to be able to communicate with businesses that are going through the process and have them upload supporting documentation. It's a, it's a really nice platform to use for this. So we're pretty excited. Um, I'm gonna go back. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump in to talking about scale up and we'll still we can still answer more questions about green leaders at the end. So scale up again is only open to uh, locally owned and operated businesses and nonprofits in uh, southern Arizona. So um, scale up offers the unique opportunity to go from education and collaboration to project planning, financing, and implementation, all in one accessible package. So what that means is in ScaleUp, um, and, and we piloted ScaleUp back in 2018, and it was uh, quite successful, um, even though I wasn't part of it, but I've heard it was great. Uh, it um, is a cohort-based program of 10 to 15 businesses per cohort, that go through a seven week workshop to learn about different components of sustainability and really focus on bringing a scale up project to fruition. So in our first scale up cohort, these were the different participants. I know we have some of these participants on the call today, which is awesome. Here's a, a case study we like to share from the first scale up about Sonoran Glass School and Bottle Rocket. Um, and this is a, a case study highlighting collaboration and the benefits of working as a cohort in collaboration. So at uh, Sonoran Glass School, which went through the program, was looking for a way to recycle their glass blowing shops glass waste. And uh, through scale up, they were able to be connected to, uh, to Bottle Rocket which makes these really awesome candles out of recycled glass. So that's kind of a win-win and, and the type of co uh, collaborations that have come from Scale Up. So in 2020, we're planning to do three different cohorts uh, in the Tucson area. The first one will be starting August 4th and applications for that will be open in July. So this is all in the future. You're getting a sneak preview. None of this is out there um, being advertised yet. And uh, the, the cohorts will be all virtual at the beginning, but 
the, the, again, the big benefit of scale up is putting together a plan to actually do a big sustainability project and to work with other businesses and learn from experts to do so. So this is really about community building and project planning. And we have a really amazing partnership with the Community Investment Corporation to develop a green community revolving fund. And so what that'll be are low cost, uh, low interest, short term micro loans for scale up graduates to find up finance their projects that achieve a 10% or more reduction in energy use, water consumption, transportation emissions, and or waste reduction. So we're working closely with them to make it as easy as possible for businesses to, and nonprofits to learn about something sustainable they want to do, plan it, finance it, and do it. And the reason why we encourage businesses to start with green leaders is because they'll get an idea of all the different really cool things they could do. So the structure of scale up, I'm not going to read all of this, but again, it's seven weeks. The basic categories kind of overlap the categories of green leaders, but the first week we'll be talking about the orientation to scale up talking a lot about how to measure uh, your usage of energy, water, and waste, talking about what the expectations are. In week two, we'll uh, uh, talk about the culture of sustainability and resiliency planning. Week three, energy. Week four, water. Week five, transportation. Week six, waste. And week seven, all the different businesses and nonprofits will present on their sustainability project plan. And so for each of these weeks, we'll have two different experts in the field locally to present um, on these subjects. And, and again, although it will be virtual, there will be, um, there will be videos you can watch on your own time and then there will be group discussions and breakout groups by industry or by some similarity. Mike, do you want to add anything about scale up? Yeah, so just briefly, the, the scale up program being the next level up from green, uh, green leaders for the local businesses uh, and nonprofits needing that additional capacity support and typically don't have the the budget uh, as much as these uh, bigger businesses do to do this kind of work. So it's been scoped for, well, from the start to go when we started it to provide that additional support for, uh, for the uh, local business, locally owned independent businesses and nonprofits and to be cohort based as Claire mentioned. So it's, uh, it's about learning from each other through it. And we want to start that with green leaders and then really go deep dive with it at the next level with scale up to be uh, to be building from what you learned ideally through green leaders and some may be ready to jump right into scale up with a project and we could accommodate that too but we're encouraging going through both to uh, better understand all your options and partnerships and uh, the different types of priorities you might want to consider so it's more of an intermediate to advanced program and then the tucson 2030 district provides an even more advanced level up for your planning and implementation. And I'll add that on the um, application page for green leaders on the website, there's a link to sign up for interest as interested in scale up in Tucson 2030 district. So although we don't have applications open for scale up or the Tucson 2030 green champions program yet, if you want to be the first to know, you can sign up, you can sign up on the interest form. So if you go through Green Leaders, we will let you know as well when everything is up. And I'll uh, add a few more details before we get into all the great questions coming up here and any others you might have. So the advanced, the most advanced program that we have that will be unveiled later this summer in full detail, and you're getting a preview now, is the Tucson 2030 District Green Champion Program. Tucson 2030 District's a partner of ours uh, through Scale Up. They provided extensive expertise for the benchmarking that we do through uh, the Scale Up program to understand energy use, water use, transportation emissions, and understanding the uh, 
the current usage and the opportunities for improvement. So the 2030 district is part of a North American network of cities across, uh, uh, across the entire country here about uh, establishing high performance building districts and uniting communities to be focused on this 2030 challenge. And the idea of this challenge is reducing energy use, water use and transportation emissions by 50% by 2030. It's an exciting challenge. It's an admittedly ambitious cha challenge. And the idea is to help the uh, businesses and particularly building owners, but others could be involved in it as well to uh, meet at least two out of, of the three 50% reduction targets of this national challenge. Next slide here shows the national network here. So you can see across the country, we're, uh, we're the only uh, district here in uh, Arizona and Tucson's got the first district. So we're uh, building it out further as part of the 22 established districts. And we're excited to uh, be part of the solution, especially with carbon emissions reductions, having the University of Arizona, Pima County and city of Tucson all involved and committed to the goals of the, the 2030 challenge for planning. That uh, is exciting to us, but uh, more important uh, than anything, it's again about collaboration. It's not about any one uh, partner, it's about how we reduce the baseline for the entire district. So going to the next slide here, the wrap up, this is uh, currently where we are with the district and uh, you can see it's spanning Menlo Park to downtown to West University in the U of A. It's a dotted line, so we could increase the uh, district over time with more participation, and we sure hope to do so as a collaborative. And then it's, uh, it's about the property owners, managers, developers, community partners. It's also about the professional service partners. It is a open community effort to meet this challenge. There's no way to do this with just a few. It really does take a, a community to, to meet the challenge. I wanted to wrap up with a case study. Uh, one of our partners, Mrs. Green's World, has been doing work for a long time now with Hotel Congress. And we're so excited to see the progress that has been made by doing what we're talking about today. It's staying with this sustainability and resiliency journey and by sticking with it you can see that a lot can get accomplished. There's a green team uh, accomplishment in and of itself, which is a way to engage your employees so that they're more likely to want to stay with you as a, as a company or a business or nonprofit over time. There's the uh, other accomplishments that they've been able to put in place to save money and to also help the planet more importantly, and solar hot water, water conservation efforts, one less straw initiatives, compost and master recycling, compostable containers, and also being part of the Tucson 2030 district. And what we want to make the point of is by going green, you can save money and then you can go uh, forward with climate action efforts that can be great for your bottom line, uh, which is of course important to a strong local business and nonprofit uh, at, at any level. But we want to make sure that we are thinking of the community simultaneously and people. So I think we got through right on time here. We wanted to leave about 20 minutes for questions and please add more in the chat box. We can go up here and cover the ones that were already brought up. So one question is for organizations which are virtual, we've been that way since our inception in 2000 with no physical structure and working out of a home office, can we be a part of this? Or is it meant for storefronts only? Thank you, Enrique, for that question. And it looks like, Kelly, thank you for answering. Yes, the, the program's available for home office operations. And we definitely have resources for, uh, I think it's really, I think any situation that you might have with your, your business in terms of how you might apply these resources. Claire, do you wanna add anything to that? No, I think you covered, well, Kelly, you and Kelly covered that. But to add on to that, I saw that there was another question about a company with multiple sites. Um, so the way we are doing it is um, by location. And so even if, again, if a company has multiple sites, um, like at Geico, for example, they obviously have multiple sites across the country. Um, but if their sites in, in Southern, Southern Arizona 
they could certify um, with this program, but they would have to certify it site by site. And there might be discounts for businesses that certify multiple sites, but it would be like um, Geico, like East Tucson location or um, yeah, something like that. I'll, I'll answer one more question that I saw. Um, will the directory include links to businesses websites? And so just for this uh, presentation, I, I want to share the rough draft of the directory just so you can get a sense of what it might look like. Again, it's not, uh, this is a sneak preview. It's not fully developed because of, uh, because we don't ha have certified businesses yet, but uh, hold on one sec and I will share that. While you're doing that, Claire, there's a question about the list of the attendees. I think uh, if anybody would like to connect, if you could drop your email in uh, the chat box here, that would be uh, that would be great. So that again, this will be recorded and shared. So if you want to connect with anybody after, we definitely encourage that now, even before getting involved with the programs. So please, uh, if you do want to connect with others, add your uh, contact information into the chat box. Thanks for that question. Yeah, so this is just the sneak preview of what the directory might look like. Again, a work in progress, but you'll see like a test for Local First Arizona. There will be information about um, our certification. And then like industry one would be nonprofits. And then uh, it'll, it'll be listed. You'll have a link to the website. And we'll consistently share out this page with consumers who are interested in shopping at green businesses in whatever industry they are part of. Let's say they're looking for a green caterer or a sustainable cleaning company. You know, I think there's so many different, um, I think so many people are looking for businesses that care, especially in light of COVID-19, care not only for the planet, but care for people in our community. And so I think this provides a really good resource to consumers that want to shop in a more conscious way and also employees that might want to uh, work in places that are more aligned with their values and for nonprofits, maybe donors that are looking for businesses that are greening their operations. I also wanted to add about the Green Leaders Program. There's some adaptability here that we're, we're building into the program, some flexibility. We are encouraging the, uh, the add-on of a point of actually sending an action our way. So if you have an action that's not on the list uh, that you've already, already undertaken or you want to take on, uh, oh, great, Claire's pulling it up right now. You'll see here at the, the bottom of the checklist here, there are actions that you can suggest. And we, we don't want to come off here like we have all the answers. I think we have a lot of research done. We've been working to get as much as we can get in here to be as, I think, uh, as deep of a uh, resource and program, resources and program that it can be. But we would love to hear from you all uh, that this is meant to be community built. Uh, part to, for me, that's one of the most exciting components of it because I think we're gonna learn a lot from this community. And I think the solutions are here uh, more than we maybe even realize sometimes. Uh, I think we need to learn from each other more. So I wanted to point that out. Yeah. There's a question. Oh, yeah. You want to add to that, Claire? Yeah. Well, two things. So there's, in addition to that, there's a whole list of additional action ideas. So if you don't, if you can't think of any, then there, you, you don't lose those five points. We have a ton of other ideas here. Um, yeah. But we're Thanks for adding that. Yeah, we have but even more resources to go along <laughs> with the program here. There's a, and then a question here from Anne. We are a nonprofit organization, Culture of Peace Alliance, that provides fiscal sponsorship for 15 local peace and justice groups and programs. Great. Uh, we will need to discuss the opportunity in our June COPA coordinating council meeting, and I would like to provide information to help people understand the focus of the, of the Screen Business Alliance. I'm imagining that the website will provide the basic aspects of the certification process, just checking to be sure. That's definitely right. Yeah, we have a lot on there. 
think it's being pulled up right now. And we can um, answer any questions that come up, any uh, uh, detailed questions that maybe the website doesn't cover yet, please let us know. Next question, what if your office lacks windows? From Barbara, thank you. That is not an issue. We'll work with you, <laughs> definitely. We can make it work. It's again, really adaptable. And uh, there's no expectation that a building has to be uh, a certain way to be participating in these programs. Or again, like you, the, you've heard earlier that you even have to have a building to participate in uh, the programs for, uh, for Mike, I'm sorry. I was just being funny because of the yeah. window decal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have, we have do little slot windows that leave, let in natural light, but not where anybody would see it. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, maybe you can come up, we can come up with some creative uh, ideas from you around how to use those elsewhere. Well, on, my, on my skylight. Yeah, maybe that's a, like, there's a social media uh, campaign. Who, who, got, who got the most creative with their decal? Thanks for Sorry, that. everybody else is so very serious. I can be serious too. <laughs> I think a little light-hearted nature is good here. Uh, and then will uh, the directory include links to the business's website? Yes, that's from Charlene. Thank you for that question. And then Donna, will there be any classes or learning labs similar to scale up? So we are planning to have these discussion, virtual discussion groups with the scholarship program for any business that needs immediate support or more support right now before scale up. So yes, we are planning a, a version of that while encouraging scale up to be the, the place to go for that deeper dive support and that cohort based support for building out your project idea or ideas that come out of Green Leaders. I'm just going to add to that real quick. So one of the parts of the checklist, one of the, one of the three required actions is to explore this regenerative economy resources um, document or web page. And you don't have to do too much as part of the certification, but it's uh, it's a bunch of different resources that our team has compiled around uh, climate change, environmental justice, and the regenerative economy, including like the circular economy, just different and um, and employee ownership cooperatives. And so, as part of the checklist. We'll be asking you to review five of these of your choice and just write a paragraph on your thoughts. But the virtual discussion group as part of the scholarship is what will really delve into these topics. I mean, you're welcome to delve into these separately from the scholarship. But that's what the scholarship discussion groups will be um, and just more support um, in general, whereas scale up will be more targeted towards creating a sustainable project and helping to understand the different and maybe more complex aspects of your energy bills and rainwater harvesting and composting and all the things that might be too complicated to just do from a checklist and that you might want more support and understanding on. It's, it's more wide ranging. And scale up is going to be open here soon, as you saw earlier in the presentation. So ideally, if you're looking for that uh, cohort based learning, it's going to be available soon and then on a quarterly basis now than it was before. So that's another exciting development. There's a question from Stephanie about uh, how do the consulting and personalized suggestions differ from the services we receive as local first members? That's a great question. Thanks for that. It, it's uh, really uh, an enhanced level of services is what it is. It's uh, a, a deeper dive into what you can do to be a stronger local business from the resiliency lens and from the sustainability lens. So we uh, want to also link businesses and nonprofits to everything we've got as local first already developed, especially in light of COVID-19. We've been working on that since day one around a whole set of webinars and other resources online. Uh, if you go to localfirstaz.com, we have a whole uh, page dedicated to all of these resources archived and continue to keep adding more uh, that are more of the, uh, the essential sta and standard business needs being met, business services and uh, planning needs. So we want to really have them be complementary 
to each other and they're intended to be. So particularly with the scholarship opportunity as well, we're going to uh, match with our network any needs that need to be met before a business can go further and faster with the programs here. So we're going to be uh, attentive to all of those needs and we don't need to wait on a scholarship uh, program being uh, provided to, a, to anybody here. If you're needing those services now, please reach out. And we definitely will do more of a, a deep dive within the scholarship program, but we're here for matching and supporting and answering questions for members now. Cool. Thank you. And I see we have a question from Melissa about uh, if there are specific practices for a landscape company to be certified, any collaboration, cross promotion with Smartscape. Um, so one of, we de we are linking to Smartscape as one of the resources in um, having a more uh, sustainable outdoors space. So I think for for landscapers that would be particularly important. It's definitely a link. It's a it's a resource if they are wanting to take advantage and complete that point. Are there any other Thanks. questions? Let's see, we got some good suggestions here. Laptop stickers for the decals, laptops or cups, and some nice compliments here. Thank you for all of these. Yard signs, not decals. <laughs> That's a creative idea. And then Gina, how exciting is this for our city? Thank you. Thank you so much everybody here for all these great comments. And then let's see. What is the link to the regenerative economy page? So that page, um, we are, cur it, it's currently internal. It's going to be shared with businesses that are going through green leaders or going through scale up. Um, though I think we could consider making that more be a, a more public facing page. Uh, that's something we would need to talk through. And please add a search on the website so we can find things. That's a good idea. We can do that. And if so if yeah. you go to the website, um, you'll see on the top, there's a, a programs tab and then you can click green leaders. Um, in fact, let me, let me share that real quick. So if you're on the uh, home page, you can go to programs and then green business leaders. This has all the information that we talked about uh, today. Um, and then you can click on the different tabs. So how it works, links to the different steps that I discussed. Here's the checklist preview. Here's the fee structure if you'd like to review it. If you click on benefits of certification, these are all the specific benefits that we spoke about today. And then if you click apply, here's where you can apply. Again, applying means that we'll contact you for a consultation. No commitment up front, um, but this is just for us to be able to talk and make sure it's a good fit. Um, and if you're interested in scale up in Tucson 2030 district, here's the interest form. If you just want to talk to us, here's our contact information up on the, the left hand side. And yes, Donna, you did submit the application and we have a call scheduled. And one more thing I wanted to add, thank you for going through that part too, Claire. And so yeah, it's sazgba.com. And I think you'll see there's a lot more uh, detail there if you want to refresh on anything we went over today or again uh, email us if you have additional questions but uh, did want to encourage everybody to get the word out about this too if you can uh, if you have time to let contacts know we want everyone to know that we're here to work together <laughs> and that's what I want to emphasize at the end of this today is that uh, we need to make this a collaborative program and programs if we're going to meet these big challenges in, uh, in the right in front of us in the immediate in this current crisis and then as we 
think long term about the uh, climate crisis. It's about currently. It's of course about COVID nineteen, but then the climate crisis is looming as well. And so we need to work together. And I think Tucson's the right size community to uh, and the surrounding region is as well to be able to effectively uh, learn from each other. And we're so excited to go forward with success stories out of all of this so that we can highlight you all and then hopefully inspire others to do uh, similar work and to think bigger too. Can we meet bigger goals over time and uh, figure it out together as a process and a journey together? So that's what I wanted to close with. Yeah, thank you all. And I will send everyone who registered for the webinar, I'll, I'll send the, uh, the slides out. Um, I could even potentially send the recording out if, if that's wanted. Um, so you could share with people who weren't able to make it. And um, yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. Uh, we can definitely send out, uh, Donna, you asked about an intro blurb to send out to our contacts. Yes, I can definitely do that. I'll send that out. And as Mike said, I think, you know, the more people who are part of this, the more people who will be looking at the directory, who will be able to be part of this network of green businesses collaborating, put that positive peer pressure on our community to do better in business, like you all are already doing, you know, being part of this webinar, being interested in these programs. And so, it's an exciting program. It's an interesting time to roll it out, but I think it's one of the most important things we can take from this time is to learn how to be prepared for future disasters and also how to be more resilient in our operations um, and just different ways in which we can also attract more customers um, and just do good for the, the community. Well, thank you all for the comments and for being here today. And please reach out. I put my email in the chat box. It's mike at localfirstaz.com if there are any questions uh, that I can also help answer. And Claire's contact information is right here. All the information's on www.sazgb. Thank you all for being part of this community with us. Yeah, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing from you and I'll leave this slide up for a second if anyone wants to um, write anything down and I'll end this in a minute. Thank you.